Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back. So we talked about uh, uh, some past works about uh, and, and the different and the, the researchers of very uh, important contributions uh, by uh, different researchers of very high stature who uh, had different kind of views on blow off. So there is not a uniform and a consensus uh, view on flame blow off and uh, uh, but anyways uh, we can compile uh, in this paper in this review paper. Uh, this authors Shanboge, Hussein and Lewin, they compiled the data from different sources as you see uh, this uh, uh, Dizube, Plume Miller, Zukowski, Williams, uh, Hotel, Yamaguchi and uh, all their measurements have been just um, uh, compiled and they tried to find a fitting uh, correlation between Reynolds number and dump column number. Okay, so Reynolds number is essentially as you have seen that is essentially a, 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 the ratio of the inertia forces to the viscous forces, but this is a normal di the diameter based Reynolds number. This is not to be confused with the turbulence, uh, turbulent Reynolds number and uh, this is also the, the dump column number. Okay. So, you see that when you have uh, when you uh, compile all the data it appears though it is like a lot of scattered in a log log plot. It appears that they follow kind of uh, this uh, Reynolds number is equal to A times log of Reynolds number plus B. That they have a scaling has, has a kind of a, a power or loss scaling of uh, between Reynolds number and dump column number. So, uh, this is the, the data that they uh, that has been compiled. Okay. So, uh, recent works I mean uh, in the sense that from uh, about uh, uh, 10 years ago uh, by in the by appearing this paper appearing general propulsion and power uh, at Georgia uh, from Georgia Tech uh, they observed that they use this me scattering images only that is they put olive oils in the in the um, olive oil uh, droplets in the flow and they shine laser and allow this olive oil uh, droplets to scatter the lights and the boundary where this olive oil evaporates can be considered as a flame boundary and uh, this is a roughly uh, it can be considered as a flame boundary and uh, they found using that technique they found out uh, what was the how does the Mm, uh, flame structure look or the flame boundaries look when the blow off is approached. Okay, so, they found that as blow off is approached there is an initiation of the flame hole and um, it is uh, convecting downstream okay, or it can heal also in some cases okay. and uh, that is the flame hole can close and uh, however, uh, it, it was they also said that this flame hole that is this uh, this uh, that is a formation of an unbound reactant or a uh, formation of a region of this bond product essentially it is a formation of an unbound reactant which is called a flame hole uh, which is surrounded by the flame boundary or the flame front um, uh, can be can also persist and uh, the flame hole they say it was created because it is uh, uh, at at, at uh, those at those points um, the, the, the there was the, the local extinction strain rate at those uh, points uh, or the or the local stretch rates at those points exceeded the corresponding extinction strain rates okay and extinction strain rate is a is a property that is measured from an uh, opposed uh, premix flame and uh, it can be considered roughly as a property of a um, of a premix flame like, like it's not as rigorous as a property as the laminar flame speed but still it's going to be considered as a measure for ignition uh, for extinction Okay. So, in this uh, reaction also in this in this uh, simulation also they found that this formation of this uh, this gaps in the flames uh, or this uh, this flame holes that is these parts contain this unburnt reactants and here these are this uh, the flame holes that are being uh, that are being formed. Okay. And this was the stage 1 where this is uh, essentially characterized by initiation of a flame hole. Okay. Now, the stage 2 is that that just before blow off that uh, but you see even the flame hole is created the flame is still a symmetric in shape. Okay. It is does not uh, does not uh, has a very large change in like uh, it does not have a change in large scale structures. But they said that uh, that uh, what they said that is that as uh, blow off is approached uh, the and right moments before blow off then the flame uh, essentially loses its symmetry and it takes a more sinus uh, shape which is uh, which is overall the large scale structure of the flame getting distorted. Okay. And they said that this is because now the flame blow off is approached there is a lot of extinction 
and uh, uh, maybe that is causing the flame uh, the flow to undergo a transition from this convective instability to um, uh, convective instability to uh, to like uh, to, to absolute instability that is from the, the symmetric vortex shedding as we have seen to the asymmetric vortex shedding. But of course, uh, we do not know why this is happening okay and uh, we do not know the exact mechanism also by which the flames uh, uh, this this uh, the, 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 the extinction along the flame structure is happening okay. So, uh, and also these are not exact, uh, this cannot be considered as exact uh, flame shape or the flame contours because these are only the boundaries where uh, the olive oils are being uh, evaporated. So, if there is a product region, high temperature product region, but no flame, then also we will see that the uh, olive oils evaporating and uh, uh, creating a, 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 a boundary like this. So, it is not exactly representative of flame. So, we need to have better, uh, um, better uh, diagnostic techniques like we need to do some laser induced fluorescence. So, with which we can better uh, better uh, uh, quantify or better pinpoint that this is the point where my flame is this is the point where there is no flame okay uh, so this is uh, why we did uh, this combined particle image velocity entry and laser induced fluorescence to understand the flame law of mechanism so this is done in a very small laboratory scale experiment where we essentially have this uh, have this uh, uh, conical uh, nozzle okay and at the end of the conical nozzle you have this bluff body you see this is a cylindrical bluff body which is placed uh, which is in this shape and uh, we have this kind of honeycombs etc. And uh, this is essentially the bluff body looks like this okay. Um, so, of course, it is a fundamental uh, work, but still this kind of fundamental works can be very important to us resolving the basic physics that is involved. Okay. And then uh, of course, you uh, send a uh, premixed uh, fuel air mixture uh, uh, into this uh, uh, nozzle uh, after, they are after the fuel and air are mixed into a mixing chamber and uh, then you basically pass your laser sheet through the mid plane of this, uh, of this, um, uh, uh, of this uh, bluff body. Uh, and you ensure so uh, so this uh, uh, this ND egg laser essentially pumps this dye laser, which passes and the output of that passes to this doubling crystal to produce this 283 nanometer wavelength, and by reflecting it through mirrors and creating a sheet optics like this, uh, one um, basically gets this uh, laser sheet, okay, uh, which forms this uh, this spliff laser sheet. Now uh, this spliff laser sheet is ex located exactly in the same location as that of the PIV laser sheet because we want to visualize the PIV and the PLIF or the we want to visualize the flow field and the OH field simultaneously okay and uh, so these two are located in the same locations okay. Uh, and uh, temporally uh, this, uh, this, this laser sheet this lasers uh, typically last for about 10 nanoseconds and this runs at a, at a frequency of about 10 hertz okay. So, we have to ensure that the PI the PLIF laser sheet temporally is located exactly midway between this uh, PIV laser sheets uh, this two PIV laser sheets which are at, uh, say at a difference of uh, like um, uh, 20 microseconds. So, uh, if this is the one uh, PIV laser sheet and this is one uh, PIV laser sheet. So, and the difference between them is about say, uh, say 20 microseconds okay. So, the PLIF laser sheet is located here uh, exactly midway between these two. So, this is in time okay and each of the width of these things is about uh, 10 uh, nanoseconds. Okay. So, uh, this is the, the thing how it uh, looks like and uh, so what does happen before blow off. Now, before we do the PIV PLIF it is uh, we can do this chemiluminescence imaging also. Uh, now, chemiluminescence is essentially this uh, visual uh, this, uh, this, uh, this visible light emission that we see from the see from the flame. Now, one thing you have to know that this uh, chemiluminescence emerges from, uh, from radicals which are chemically activated. And as a result of that you cannot uh, these are not in thermal equilibrium and uh, from this chemiluminescence you cannot really measure the radical concentration because there is no equilibrium uh, among them these are chemically activated. Mm, so, you really cannot obtain the steady or you cannot really obtain the ground state population of the of the of the of the of the radicals which are emitting this light okay. Mm, so, uh, you cannot do that, uh, but you can do that in the PLIF. Okay. Uh, so, from chemiluminescence what you can get is essentially a qualitative idea of heat release because uh, people have shown that uh, researchers have shown that that uh, uh, if you uh, uh, that uh, the chemiluminescence signal is essentially proportional to the uh, to the heat release rate 
for uh, premix flames okay so uh, this quantity quality will tell us how the heat release is uh, another problem of chemiluminescence is that it is line of sight integrated okay so plif you can get it in one plane piv you can get in one plane whereas uh, chemiluminescence is line of sight integrated but still you can get a qualitatively uh, nice idea so what you see is that uh, that what you have near blow off that if you this is at about taken at about 500 hertz uh, um, this was this work was done in uh, uh, late 2009 um, um, early 2010 uh, so um, and uh, mid mid 2009 2010ish and um, so um, uh, or from 2008 to 2010 something like that so uh, you see that uh, here this uh, flame uh, which is about 6.8 seconds before blow off it uh, was uh, stable here but then it uh, loses um, uh, then it uh, then it you see that this sort of flame holes forming large flame holes forming that is uh, uh, this there is no chemiluminescence there is no heat release and then you see uh, that the flame becomes essentially sinus in uh, structure you see this is a sinus mode kind of developing here and then it again re-establishes okay so this thing can happen just a little bit before blow off by the way the the here uh, the flow is going from uh, left to uh, from bottom to up in each of these images and this is the flame holder is uh, something like this okay so this is the flame holder is uh, stabilized here and the flame is stabilized a t-shaped flame holder or in a cylindrical t essentially and the flame is stabilized just downstream of that okay so uh, here you see that uh, just before uh, blow off you can have this kind of a sequence where you see that large flame holes are forming and then the flame goes into this recirculation zone and then it goes into blow off again now one thing to note is that uh, in that regard that uh, uh, that this uh, uh, that if we just go back to this previous um, uh, uh, previous uh, structure of the recirculation zone, say in this one, okay. Uh, so what happens here the in a, in a recirculation zone? I mean, irrespective of the bluff body, so the flame is stabilized. So the, this is a this is the you have a flame here, right? So the flame is essentially stabilized. Let me use a different uh, color. Uh, let's use. Uh, Let's use blue for premix flames. So the flame is essentially stabilized. Uh, like this. Okay. So this is fresh mixture. Which is entraining into this flame. Okay. And as soon as it enters into the flame. It recirculates of course. But it becomes bound products. Alright. So outside you have fresh mixtures. Inside you have bound products. So as soon as it enters into the flame, in this recirculation zone, what is what is recirculating? Okay, what is uh, recirculating like this, and what is recirculating like this? Is burnt products. Okay, so for a stable flame, which is with the, where there is no extinction along this uh, along the flames along these shear layers, as you see the shear layers are formed here, uh, which is characterized by large values of W omega z. So the flame is stabilized along shear layers and inside the recirculation zone you only get bond products okay because the flame is continuous anything that goes through the recirculation zone must be bond products but in such cases you see that for example now you see this recirculation zone contains some reactions okay so the recirculation zone can contain only reactions can contain reactions can contain intermediates or it can release heat because it's you are seeing chemiluminescence from there it can release heat only when you have flames extinguished along the shear layers okay either sideways or downstream when the flame is extinguished along the shear layers only the fresh mixture can entrain through the shear layers and pass through the shear layers unburnt and go into the recirculation zone and due to the favorable time scales there can react to produce this heat release and which produces this chemiluminescence okay so this is then the question is this is this what is happening before blow off that is the flame is extinguishing along the shear layers so then uh, but of course chemiluminescence is a qualitative technique it does not give you the full idea so what we need to do is that we need to use this high speed uh, high fidelity techniques like piv plif to basically understand what is going on okay now before that we also get this uh, this is a final blow off event okay does do you see recirculation zone burn uh, in the final blow off event also yes it is indeed the case you see 
that under normal circumstances here you do not see too much of reactions here right because you have uh, had a flame there. But now as soon as the reactions become weak you see the flame is uh, there is no flame here and essentially the product that is goes in it can go in through here and by the time it enters it can uh, it can uh, burn uh, inside the recirculation zone and that can lead to essentially flame blow off ok. And this adds to the uh, shape or the direction of the flow from top bottom to top. So, the, you see the flame blow off is characterized with which we observed for the first time that the flame blow off is characterized by this event called recirculation zone burn ok. That is under recirculation zone under in normal circumstances contain only hot products, but just before blow off it contains it emits this chemiluminescence which tells us that the flame must have extinguished along the shear layers and as a result of that it is uh, uh, it is uh, the fresh mixtures can pass through the shear layers unburnt and by the time it again gets into the recirculation zone uh, it still remains unburnt and but now due to favorable time scales there it is recirculating it can burn and it can produce this uh, emission and uh, it can also uh, produce this chemiluminescence which tells us that there is reaction going inside the recirculation zone ok. So, is it really the case does PLIF PIV also tells us this? And the second thing is that why does the flame extinguish along the shear layers? Approach as blow off is approached what causes the flame to extinguish along the shear layers? That is a question. So, for that we did uh, PIV and PLIF uh, simultaneously at uh, two cases one for stable flame which is far from blow off and the other is for the uh, 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 other is for the unstable flame uh, which is uh, more near uh, which is which is more uh, uh, close to uh, blow off. Okay. So, what happens for the stable flame? You see that yes this flame is there and you see uh, wrinkles because you have Kelvin Helmholtz vortices ok. These are this Kelvin Helmholtz vortices this is the positive uh, uh, vorticity this is the negative vorticity because they are in this way it is rolling like this in this way it is rolling like this. Uh, and if we extract the flame edges you see this very sharp flame boundary is formed ok. And if we extract this uh, flame edges by this large gradients maximum gradient of OH uh, by, by mathematical by, by, by algorithms uh, like canny edge detection etcetera. We see that the flame edge essentially envelops this Kelvin Helmholtz vortices ok. Kelvin Helmholtz vortices are inside the flame edge. Now what happens as blow off is approached you see this large regions of flame holes are formed ok, flame hole is formed, flame hole is formed ok. And more interestingly you see that this now this flame edge is essentially overlapping this Kelvin Helmholtz vortices ok. Of course, the flame is much more distorted shape, but it is overlapping this uh, Kelvin Helmholtz vortices. And of course, you see this large uh, flame holes being formed and this large regions of extinction being formed and once again you invariably you see this flame edge now overlapping this Kelvin Helmholtz vortices ok. Now, uh, if you look at this these are of course, one images you cannot comment on something uh, to be uh, to be a mechanism when you just see one image you have to do get the statistics. So, if you get the statistics you see that this is far from blow off this is near blow off red is for OH on the right hand axis this blue is for uh, velocity on the left hand axis. So, you see that <coughs> this uh, uh, OH has a kind of a bimodal peak like this you see. Uh, and uh, this OH peak essentially corresponds to the maximum vorticity that is uh, that is uh, this says that statistically also the maximum OH is located inside this uh, shear layers ok. Now, as blow off is approached you see this bimodal distribution uh, in spatial distribution of uh, OH is lost and you get a single uh, like a central uh, distribution ok. So, this says that the you cannot uh, statistically you cannot find maximum OH along the shear layers you can now statistically you find maximum OH inside the recirculation zone like this ok. So, you see that the vorticity structure has not changed on average has not changed too much ok, but the OH structure has changed and there is no OH on average along the shear layers. So, that shows that there is no OH which is a marker of the reactive uh, which is essentially a reactive intermediate and a marker of the most reaction most important combustion uh, chain uh, re most important elementary reaction that is a chain termination chain branching reaction H plus O 2 going to O H plus O ok. So, that reaction is uh, th that that thing is not happening along the shear layers anymore. So, the flame on statistically is settled inside the recirculation zone and you do not have a flame along the shear layers ok. So, that means that the flame is extinguished along the shear layers or it has gone inside. 
So, uh, you see this consistently here also that at along all locations 10 millimeters, 20 millimeters, 30 millimeters uh, for uh, all these things. Um, if you uh, look at this, you have bimodal distribution of OH uh, at an equivalence ratio 0 0.9. Near blow off at 0 0.77, you see this unimodal distribution of OH and uh, this uh, uh, this flame has which has the flame has extinguished along the shielders. Same thing you can get from conditional PDFs also. Okay. So, then the question is that what causes the flame look flame to extinguish along the shear layers. For that we need to basically go back into the basics of premix flame extinction by heat loss and by stretch. Okay. And if you remember that uh, for a uh, if you have extinction along the uh, if you have a heat loss for a premix flame okay, and this heat loss can be caused by a Lewis number greater than 1 premix flame when it is under positive stretch you have a this kind of a response. Of course, this is for a 1D flame, okay. it is a 1D um, analysis, but you saw that that this this is this was the F, F tilde is essentially the your uh, your normalized uh, burning flux. So, when the heat loss is at this point about this about this value it, 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 it inverse then you have a turning point in F which corresponds to extinction. Okay. So, the heat loss at this state this this e to the minus 1 is sufficient to cause the flame extinction. You also discuss the concept of stretch okay. that if you have stretch also the question now is that the point is that you have exactly the same analysis same result as you have by heat loss. Because what stretch causes for a Lewis number greater than 1 if this stretch kappa is greater than 0 then you have heat loss and you have this kind of an extinction behavior. Okay. And our flame is essentially a propane air flame at phi equal to 0.77 near blow off and that has Lewis number greater than 1. Okay. Sorry. Point 0.77 near blow off and that has a Lewis number greater than 1. So, if it is undergoing stretch it can if positive stretch it can exceed it can undergo it can be blown off it can extinguish locally and that can lead to blow off okay so now we look into the pdfs of strain rate along the oh cliff edge which can be obtained by this formula that is essentially this is a projection of uh, it's a projection of the uh, of the strain rates along the flame uh, tangent okay if you do that Okay, you find that uh, and find the PDF of course, because it is a turbulent flame one uh, you cannot have one value of stretch along the entire flame surface. So, you basically generate a, a probability distribution for a density function. Okay. So, the PDF so says that that uh, at equivalence ratio 0 0.9 you have this is the PDF. Okay. You have this is a, this as this as the PDF at equivalence ratio 0.77 your stretch PDF is like this. Okay. That means, as blow off is approached is the stretch PDF or the flame stretch increases for most part of the flame. On the other hand the extinction strain rate that is the maximum strain rate uh, laminar opposed premix flame can sustain which is a measure of the strain holding capacity of a flame before it undergoes extinction that reduces. So, that reduces from this value from get up the, from near about 2500 to less than 2000 whereas, this actual strains move increase. So, this causes an opposing movement on one hand your uh, your the strain level of the 0.77 flame is increasing that is it is undergoing more straining, but its strain carrying capacity or its strain holding capacity is reduced because its extension strain rate is reduced. As a result what will happen? The flame will extinguish, right? So its strain has exceeded, its actual strain has exceeded, but its limiting strain has that the threshold strain that it can accept that is reduced, so it extinguishes. So essentially, it's the shear layer flame extinction along the shear layers that allows this uh, flame to be uh, the, the flame the shear layers to be free of the flame and when the flame when the shear layers are free of the flame the fresh mixture can entrain through the shear layers and it can go into the recirculation zone unburnt and 
it can uh, react inside the recirculation zone due to favorable time scale and that is why we get high uh, amount of chemiluminescence and large heat release from the recirculation zone just prior to blow off. So, this is the thing. So, the one question we did not answer is that why does this shifting happen? Why does the PDF shift into the right direction that is why does the flame get more strained as it approaches blow off? The reason can be understood from here. You see at equivalence ratio 0 0.9 this flame was enveloping this Kelvin Helmholtz vortices. So, the flame cone angle like this was large because its average flame speed is large, its turbulent flame speed is also large. But as the flame speed reduces okay, to, to balance with the local normal velocity the flame angle reduces and you see the flame is much more columnar now. Okay. Now, as the flame from a conical flame becomes a more columnar flame instead of overlapping this Kelvin Helmholtz vortices now it gets instead of uh, so, so this was essentially enveloping the Kelvin Helmholtz vortices. So, while the flame was a conical flame the flame was enveloping the Kelvin Helmholtz vortices, but as the equivalence ratio is reducing from a conical flame the flame becomes a columnar flame and so that because its flame speed has reduced and to balance with the local flow field for the cone angle reduces it can be easily shown you can you should show it actually that how does the flame cone angle reduce uh, and it becomes more columnar as the flame speed is reduced. But what the math the fact of the matter is that that as the flame cone angle reduces that the flame becomes more columnar instead of enveloping this Kelvin Helmholtz vortices the flame now essentially overlaps with this Kelvin Helmholtz vortices and this Kelvin Helmholtz vortices can impart strong strain on the flame surface and that essentially cause the PDF of this strain on the stretch rate on the flame surface to increase in the right hand side to increase and to proceed to as right hand side and of course, the extension strain is reducing. So, now you see here at point 0.9 only is very small this percentage this amount of the flame exceeded the extinction stretch rate. So, there is very small extinction, but now you see that whole of this part of the flame is now uh, exceeded the extinction strain rate. So, as a result of course, it causes the flame to extinguish and uh, there is the shear layer essentially the flames extinguish along the shear layers because that is where the maximum strain is and now the fresh mixture can pass through the shear layers and can get into the recirculation zone and can react there due to favorable time scales. Okay. So, we see the stage 3 in blow off dynamics and uh, which also is characterized with this recirculation zone burn which we clearly see that from the PLIF images also that you see this, uh, this maximum OH the super equilibrium OH happening along the uh, recirculation zones uh, inside the recirculation zone. And this recirculation zone burn that is the strong PLIF signal from the recirculation zone cannot be obtained in a normal circumstances. So, this is the high hallmark of this work where we essentially formulated the how the blow off essentially happens um, in the uh, to cause the uh, 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 which which connects the initial inception of this flame holes to the final blow off event. Okay. So, in the next uh, so this was done in a small laboratory experiment in the next class we will see that we will basically do these experiments in a real uh, uh, engine like configuration and we will see if this in a different Reynolds number higher Reynolds number different geometry whether this mechanism still holds or not. So, till then goodbye.